Today, the name of God that we are considering is Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. Israel had just escaped from Egypt by crossing the Red Sea. We're now traveling through the desert of Shur. For three days, they traveled without finding any water. Finally, they came to Marah, but the water was undrinkable. Moses prayed and God showed him how to make the water drinkable. God then said to the people, if you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. The word heals here can also mean curing and repairing. Jesus also had a ministry of healing. He made the lame walk, he made the blind see, he even restored the dead to life. He did this to demonstrate his power and authority, to demonstrate that he was the Son of God. However, Jesus' primary ministry was not as a physician of bodies, but as a physician of souls. When Jesus was meeting with Nicodemus, one of the Pharisees, he referred, he referred to another incident that occurred during the Exodus. And he said, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. In the instant to which Jesus referred, the people had rebelled against God, and God had sent venomous snakes amongst them. When the people repented, God told Moses to make a bronze snake and put it up on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and looked at the bronze snake, they lived. Jesus' ministry was to heal or repair our relationship with God. He rightly saw that sin was our biggest problem, that it was sin that separated us from God. Peter understood this when he said, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For the last three months, our thoughts have been taken up with the fight to contain the coronavirus epidemic and the search for the best way to, to cure and prevent the virus. Sin, however, poses an even greater threat. During the lockdown, many of us have been temporarily separated from friends and family. But sin threatens to separate us from God and his kingdom forever. Jesus is the cure. All those Israelites had to do in the wilderness was to look up at the bronze snake and they would be cured. In order to mend the relationship with God, all we have to do is to look to Jesus as our Lord and Saviour. I'd like to conclude today's thought with a quote from Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Let us pray. Lord, we do indeed praise you. We confess our sin and acknowledge that it is our sin that separates us from you. Lord, thank you for the Lord Jesus, who bore our sins in his body on the cross. Lord, thank you that by his wounds we have been healed. Amen. <laughs>